Well, uh, today is kind of a one-time, special, one-off message. We do this from time to time. We like to operate within series where we kind of talk about a certain topic or section of scripture or um, interesting thing over a series of weeks. But this time, we're just doing kind of a one-off uh, thing. We did a one-off last week. So we'll get back into a message next week. Really, this, this kind of concept has been brewing in me, the idea of what we're going to talk about today has been brewing in me for a while, I've been thinking about this, it's been, um, it's been something that I've sort of been mulling over, and let me get to it. I'm calling it the, in the age of luxury, and I'm sure that you can identify with that, because you all live very luxurious lives, don't you? <laughs> like you're in, you were just in the Cayman Islands, like yesterday, right? I wonder what, if we took a picture of this right here, and showed it to maybe one of the disciples in the first century, what would they say about that? What would they think about this picture? So I'm gonna show you a picture of a Fresno home. Okay, this is actually a home in Fresno. It's a home in Fresno. <laughs> My father's house has many rooms. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I think that sort of describes a little bit of the luxury we just took a look at, and they might think, man, is that, is that a picture of heaven? How did you get that? What, are you from some alternate dimension? What's happening here? You know, where is this place? There's lights inside that dwelling place, but they don't look like lamps. I don't understand how this is happening. There's a pool of water. It doesn't look like a bathhouse, you know, like the Roman Greco bathhouses. There's no, like, columns around. I don't understand what's happening. What's that small pool? There's lounging. There's chairs. Those look soft. I've never seen a soft chair. How did you get that? What is that? green stuff. It's all perfectly aligned, and it's like the same size. How, did, how does that work? In my father's house, as many rooms, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, here's the thing. You and I absolutely know that that's, that's not our reaction. That you and I absolutely know that this ain't heaven, right? That this ain't heaven. You and I absolutely know that. And, and here's the thing about that, because in that picture, they wouldn't see our inner misery They'd see our outer fortune, right? They'd see our financial success, but they wouldn't see what goes on on the inside of whoever owns that house. I'm not saying that they're miserable, but I'm saying a lot of people in our day and age, even though they have plenty of resource, are absolutely miserable. I'm sure you know a few. You've read about a few. You've seen movies about a few. You may even be one of the few. I don't know. But I mean, technology, think about it, has never been more amazing, never been more amazing. Calendars has never been more full. Productivity has never been higher. Experiences have never been more available in every day. Like every single day of your life, you can have some sort of outing or experience that is unparalleled in history. And like I said, we know this ain't heaven. This ain't heaven. But... You and I have the opportunity to bring down a little bit of heaven every day into our current reality. And here's what I mean by that. That may be confusing, but what I mean by that is, is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And what I mean by the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is, is an environment in which it adheres to the reign of God, or it subjects itself to the reign of God, or it appreciates and operates underneath the reign of God. You and I have the opportunity to bring that into our world every single day. So we're going to pick it up in Matthew um, chapter 6. This is verse 19. I, I challenge you, go read the whole thing. It starts in Matthew 5. And he goes several chapters, and it's incredible. And he challenges just about every uh, norm of their society and many of ours today as well in that section. So this is Matthew 6, verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Okay, so let me break that down. Do not store up, in other words, gather or reserve for yourselves tre treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal because those things are finite. They have an end, right? But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal because 
Those things are infinite. They last forever. Mm -hmm. So if you have an investment you're going to make, invest in forever, not in things that die. Invest in forever, not in things that are broken down. Right? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. This is where it gets confusing because you're like, are you changing subjects? I don't understand. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. So he goes from talking about kind of investing and, and, and reserving things and treasure. And then he starts talking about light and eyes. But let me kind of give you a little context because in the Greek language, which this is written in, those have different connotations than, than what we have. So when he talks about the eyes, the lamp, of the body, if your eyes are healthy, the, the Greek term for healthy here implies generous. We don't read that in our English text, but that's what it implies, generous. A generous person is a person of light in this context, in this culture, in this Greek language. Your whole body will be full of light or generosity. But if your eyes are unhealthy, and the Greek term here for unhealthy implies stingy, if your eyes are unhealthy or stingy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light or generosity within you is darkness, actually stinginess, how vast or how great is that darkness or stinginess within you? That brings the whole thing differently than, than most of us have ever read it, right? Let me say it again. If your eyes are unhealthy or stingy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light or your generosity within you is darkness, actually stinginess. So like if your best generosity is still stingy, how great is that stinginess within you? I'm going to have to read that 50 more times to really understand that myself. I'm just saying that really changes the context or the, the understanding here. Verse 24. No one can serve two master, masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. Or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. In other words, you cannot play the finite game here and play the infinite game of heaven. You must choose what you're going to play, what game you're playing. This really challenges a lot of our assumptions. It really challenges a lot of our, our assumptions. And Jesus is talking about how to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven, not just get the mansion on earth that many of us would like. So that begs the question, what is treasure in heaven? And there's a lot of uh, different thoughts on this, but I think we miss it when we try to define it by jewels and crowns and all kinds of stuff, which I understand are, are written about as well. But I think treasure in heaven is relational. I think it's relationships. I really do. Here's what I know. In order to build great lifelong and eternal relationships with people, Jesus indicates that we need to think of our stuff as a way not just to enjoy our own lives, but bless others. In other words, we need to be generous towards others. Here's something else I know. Consistent Service to others cultivates selflessness. And Jesus has a lot to say about selfishness. And he desires us to be selfless. Less of ourselves. Right? We have meaning and fulfillment in life when we're not all about ourselves. Because a life that is all about itself will have only itself to show for itself at the end of itself. Right? Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes to that, hopefully you have some sort of celebration of your life at the end of your life. When somebody comes to that, hopefully they, didn't, they don't just say, ah, he was all about himself. Because that's a life of darkness and stinginess and non-eternal relationships because we've only invested in our own temporal wealth. But I think serving to live Meaning like seeking a life of service so that we have real fulfillment in life that's godly. And I think that's the level that Jesus is trying to challenge us to get to in our lives. A life that it doesn't just, we're not just like, hey, 
I'm living to serve, you know, I'm about other people, but like I'm really about other people. And, and the way that I feel like I'm truly alive is when I am thinking about other people so much that I'm not thinking about myself. And I'm serving, and it makes me really live. Father, we thank you for Jim and Carrie. We thank you for their generosity and their love for people and just that they've chosen to be involved in this church to bless our lives and the people that we're reaching in our community. I pray that you would give us all opportunities to be more generous towards others, to serve others, to see life that is truly life uh, in, a, in a life that serves others. And it's not about ourselves. Help us to folk, focus more on other people than about ourselves and be more about and for other people than ourselves. Help us to go last. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week for the start of our next series, Guardrails.